Welcome back, everybody. We're at the Library of Congress National Book Festival 2016. I'm Rich Folley. This is the PBS Book View Now set. And it's such a pleasure to have Lois Lowry joining us right now, who's the author currently of Looking Back, A Book of Memories. It's a book you wrote a while ago, but you've updated. Yeah. But welcome. It's great to have Thank you here. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. Let's start with Looking Back. Okay. You are also the author as we uh, of, of some amazing books, The Giver and Number of the Stars, which are sitting right here beautiful books and, and part you. of the iconic canon of literature now for young readers, both Newbery Medal winners and so many other books. What was it though that made you want to go back and first of all, write your, go about writing your memoir the first time, but then go back and yeah. update it and, and, and add to it. Okay, I wrote it the first time, I think 20 years ago, at least it was published 20 years ago, and it was because, like all authors, the number of times I was asked, how do you get your ideas? which required me, rather than just giving a glib answer, to think about that. And I realized that most of my books, including the two you have here, came from things in my own life. And because my father had been a photographer, and I was the recipient of the boxes of old photographs, I began going through and making those connections. Put them together in book form, and that first copy of Looking Back was published 20 years ago, but of course, 20 years have passed. And the publisher came to me and said, hey, why not update it? So again, I went through the past 20 years, looked for photographs, looked for the connections to books that I've written in those past years, and here it is all over again. People reading this book now often either were alive 20 years ago or were too young to have read the first one, so for them it's like a brand new book. Yeah. There's, the book is a collection of photographs you mentioned from your, from your family history, yeah. both when you were a girl and with your grandchildren and, and yeah, own children, your, your pets, yes. uh, <laughs> lots of others. But it's also a, a, it's, it's snippets from your books. And, it, and there's little quotes from all the books. And it, to your point, it sort of leads us down the path of maybe where some of your inspiration comes from. Those snippets, though, that, that are in the book, do they just pop out into your mind? Or how did you know which, which paragraph and where do they come from inside well, of you? Of course, looking through the bo boxes of old photographs, some triggered nothing outside of maybe a memory in my past, but others spoke to me uh, about a book that I'd later written, and it would appear in my, I mean, some of those books are quite old. I've been around a long time, but I would remember, oh yes, that's where that came from. And, uh, and to make that connection between what I felt when I was in that photograph and what I maybe 50 years or so later wrote was really quite intriguing to me, and I think also, teachers have found that it inspires kids. I, they don't have as long a history as I do. They don't have as many old photographs, but they can do the same thing, and they can tell a story about that moment in that photograph. Yeah. How does that relate to your writing, the visual art side of your writing? As a, you, you mentioned earlier you're, you're, you're once a professional photographer and, it's, and in the dark room, et cetera. Yeah, oh, um, I miss the dark room. Uh, but I've always been a very visual person. And I think that comes through in what I write. And in fact, when I wrote The Giver, when I was working on it at first, it was very difficult to create a world in which there's very little visual stuff because it's a colorless world. To me, the world is so full of, of color that that's that permeates all of my books and I had to extract it from the giver. It was hard. Yeah. There's, there's an interesting element too of your, of your memoir that also applies to the giver in the sense that you're looking back at so many of these photos and you don't know exactly what was happening there and you're sort of extrapolating out of an image or trying to remember. Oftentimes there is no memory of that moment but it's just a picture that you're wondering what was going on. Tell us about that whole notion of, of, of photography as a snapshot in time that maybe isn't up here in your mind exactly what was happening that day. Well, of course, back to The Giver for a moment. That's a book about memory, and, and it, it was triggered by the fact that my father was losing his memory. I, though I'm getting close to the age at which that happens to people, have not yet had that happen. And I actually do have a photographic memory uh, and when I look back at these old photographs, you said maybe some of them don't trigger memories. Wrong. They do. <laughs> they all do. I can look at a photograph like the one on the cover of this book, in which I'm probably five, and I can remember that day, and I can remember the, uh, 
the sensations that go with it. I remember how uncomfortable that horrible bathing suit was, and I remember the smell of the log-built room where we had to change our clothes, mold and dead bugs in the corners. Uh, all of those things come back to me. I think it's one of the reasons I've been able to write for kids, because I can call back those childhood memories. Yeah, that's amazing. You, you also write about loss in this book. Your, your sister, um, who plays a big part in, your, in the memoir, you see so many pictures of her, yeah. there she is on the cover, and, and your own son, Gray, yeah. who, who you lost yeah. in an accident, in a military accident, yeah. he, was a, yeah. he was a pilot. There, there's some really poignant photos in here of that, and in fact, there's one about his daughter and the Schmetterling, which is the word oh, for yes. butterflies. Butterfly. My, my granddaughter, my son's daughter, was born in Germany. He was stationed there, and he married a lovely German woman. And so there's a photograph of him reading to her when she's two. Not yet two, because she was under two when he died. But it's a book about butterflies, and he's teaching her the German word for butterflies. Yeah. All of these little moments come back. And of course, everybody's life incorporates loss. I mean, that's how we go forward, by learning how to incorporate that loss into our lives and deal with it. Yeah. But they are poignant photographs to me looking at them now, as well as the photographs of my sister who died when she was 28. Yeah, there's a, there's a scene in the book where you talk about uh, your mother who lost your sister yeah. at about the same age that you lost yes. Gray, and yeah. this idea of having tea together or coffee and yes, being able yeah. to talk about what you were yeah. going through. A little fantasy, because yeah. uh, my mother was, was gone by the time my son died, but it made me realize what it would have been like for her, something we didn't discuss at the time, and so I can only do it in my imagination now. Right, it was a beautiful part of the book. Um, you know, I also, uh, there's so many photos in the book about with you with books or being read to or your sister reading to you or, or your daughter yeah. reading on the back of that horse, which is a wonderful <laughs> photograph. Um, or as you said, it, you're... It, it, I'm going to interrupt you to say, no, that isn't a wonderful photograph. As a photographer, I can say that. I snapped that so quickly from an upstairs window and it's not a good photograph and I regret that because it's a wonderful scene. My daughter, age 11, on the back of a horse in our yard, lying on her back, reading a book. It stopped me in my tracks. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe from a composition standpoint, you wish you had it otherwise, yeah, but yeah. it seems to have done the trick yeah. um, in, in my mind. The point that I guess I was trying to make, though, is that books seem to play, I mean, obviously, you're, you're, you write wonderful children's literature and, and young adult literature. It's an important part of your life, and it's been an important part of all of your family's life. Talk about just that role when you were younger of books and, and how you gravitated to them. I was so fortunate uh, to be born into a family that valued books, with a mother who had been a teacher, who read to me, with an older sister who not only read to me but taught me to read, and at an age where I already knew what books meant. And so books have been a part of my life since early, earliest childhood and then became part, I think, of my children's lives and now my grandchildren and all of those people, my children, my grandchildren, they're all in this book, all of them with a book in their hands. Yeah, so many people have read these books in my hand. Uh, these two Newbery Medal winners, The Number of the Stars and The Giver. You just told me that you yeah. took the photographs for both these books, too. These are your pictures that yes. are on these iconic yeah. covers, yeah. Uh, which is stunning to me. I had no clue. Um, <laughs> But these books are important books and people in, in young readers' lives still today. What do you think, though, that the role of literature plays in the world that we're living in right now? There's this confusing place. There's, there's um, a, whether it's a political election, it's, uh, the world is always confusing, but it seems like literature has a role to play there. What are your thoughts about that? Well, for me, and I think for everyone, literature plays a role, I think, in rehearsing our lives yet to come. Uh, for kids, who are going to go out there, particularly in today's world, and face some scary stuff. What they're reading about helps them to rehearse how they will react to different situations. Of course, they don't do that unless you give them a book with a protagonist they can relate to and sympathize with, and with a plot that moves along and makes them turn those pages. But they learn about life, uh, life they'll encounter someday, and uh, that's a very valuable uh, thing for them. I'm sorry to see Today's kids, with their uh, mechanical devices things, and their devices, uh, and I include my own grandchildren in that, although my only granddaughter, the one born in Germany, is now in graduate school and a real scholar. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of sad to see, see that 
aspect lost, although I think books will always be there. Somehow or another, books keep holding on, especially with young readers, and there seems to be a new generation now of writers who are finding ways to connect and maybe even incorporate some of those devices into yeah. the conversation. Yeah. We'll see where yeah. it goes. Will we see another update of looking back sometime? Oh uh, gosh, I'm going to be 80 on my next birthday 20 years from now. Yeah. I doubt if I'll be here to update this one. My life will be updated, but you may not get to know yeah. in what ways that happens. Well, I appreciate it. It's a very intimate look into your world you. in a way that allows us all to search in our own lives at the same yeah, time. I hope so. And uh, you, for all that you've done for children's literature and for the beautiful book, Looking Back, thank you so much for being thank with you. us. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to Lois be here. Lowry, thanks so much okay. for being with us here on PBS.